Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. Now in today's video, guys, I'm going to be doing another Halloween ranking. We still got a few more of these to go, but um, in this one, if you check the community post, you would know what one is next. I am going to be doing the timelines ranking. This is another one that I was really excited to do, and of course, I waited to do until the end of this uh, current timeline that we have uh, that that was uh, established, um, that has been established these past four years. Um, but yeah, we still got a few more rankings to go, and then I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to be doing next for content. I'm not really sure. Um, I apologize for being a little bit delayed on the on these rankings. It's kind of, I've kind of been on a flip-flop between not being able to do these videos and then being open to do these videos. So I've just been trying to do these whenever I possibly can so that I'm not <clears throat> extremely delayed uh, in throwing out these rankings. Because, um, you know, I, I don't want to be throwing out the rankings after Halloween is done. And it's only, only we're only about nine days away from Halloween now. So that's crazy to think about. But this is kind of all the content that I had established for October anyway. So um, I might just wait till after Halloween to figure out what I'm going to do uh, anyways. Um, so, and I don't know how quick I'm going to be able to get these next two rankings out anyway. But um, other than that, just to kind of give you a heads up on how this is all going to work. So, there is technically five different timelines in Halloween, in the Halloween franchise. Um, but I made a few makeshifts one, makeshift ones, including one where I just put one into uh, into another timeline just to kind of merge it together because I didn't, I just didn't want to have, uh, I'll just say what it was. I just didn't want to have Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. It's just own single timeline. I just thought that was really weird. So I just threw it in with something else and you'll, you'll see what I mean. So <clears throat> in no particular order, <clears throat> the timelines that I have in this ranking are going to be, um, the Thorn timeline. Of course, I'm sure you guys could predict that one. The Rob Zombie Reboot Timeline, the Modern Day Timeline, the H40 Timeline, um, the Halloween H2O, and then Resurrection Timeline, um, the and then these are getting into my makeshift ones. We have Halloween as a standalone concept, and I'll discuss what exactly I mean if you're confused about that later. Uh, the Anthology Timeline, which is the timeline where I just put uh, Halloween 3 with Halloween 1 and 2. And then uh, the Halloween 1, 2, H2O uh, timeline, where I disregard Resurrection, because uh, I'm sure you guys could could have already predicted that, where I disregard Resurrection, and it's just 1, 2, and H2O as a, as a timeline. So, as you can see, I made a few makeshift ones, um, and made sure to include all of the actual timelines in as well, so I didn't just throw them away. But, uh, so, in this ranking, I will have seven different timelines to rank, and, uh, I think that's all I gotta say. Let's get into this. Number seven, and I'm sure you probably could have predicted this, um, after seeing a few of my makeshift timelines that I added in there, is going to be the H2O plus Resurrection timeline, whatever you want to call it. And, um, this one would include Halloween 1, 2, H2O, and Resurrection. And, uh, boy, oh, boy, oh boy, this timeline was doing so great until the very end where Resurrection kicks in. And it's literally just Resurrection that ruins this entire timeline, just utterly and completely ruins a perfect ending. And then, if, if we just kind of stop there and then we go to the ending of this Resurrection, replaces it, or we go to the ending of Resurrection, replaces it with this cliche, just terrible, ending that it, it, it's it seems like it's something they always throw in a lot of horror movies to to speculate that there might be a sequel or whatever and it's just michael myers opening his eyes after they they take him into the operating room and then they unzip the bag or whatever to look at him and his eyes open up and that's that's the ending it's it's so stupid it replaces a perfect perfect ending to a trilogy uh, I'll talk to that later. Don't want to spoil anything, but um, yeah, just and and the retcon, the excuse for the retcon by having Michael Myers um, re replace or get into the paramedic suit and then crush his larynx, so apparently he couldn't talk, and that's that's why he couldn't talk when when he was uh, confronted by Laurie. And then he just wanders off in, into the woods in this paramedic outfit, and, you know, he puts the mask on the paramedic or whatever. It is, it is so dumb. So, yeah, it's it's literally just resurrection that, that ruins this timeline. 
and uh, it's not hard for a movie that is literally at the bottom of my of my Halloween franchise or my Halloween films uh, ranking to just completely ruin a timeline single-handedly. So yeah, number seven is uh, the H2O Plus Resurrection timeline. And number six is going to be the Thorn timeline, which, if you don't know, consists of Halloween one, two, four, five, and six. And for me, the Thorn timeline isn't isn't terrible, um, but it definitely is. It slowly degrades as it goes further down um, the the list. However, you want to say it. You know, you have a fresh start with Halloween one and two, which some people I don't know why have kind of. They, they, I don't know. They've been really strict on Halloween two for some reason. Are are really just really shitting on Halloween two. I I don't think it's really the fan base, but it's more the directors and the the producers who were involved with the movie for some reason just despise like they just despise Halloween two for whatever reason, and that's why they made the the whole H forty timeline. Never understood that, but uh, yeah. Um, and then you get into Halloween four, which is I I think a really really fresh return to the franchise. Um, and then you start to get into Halloween 5 and 6, and that's where it starts to get bad. Halloween 5 was obviously a very rushed, uh, film, very messy. They start to introduce some of the Thorn stuff, but it looks like they just weren't able to get into all of it. And so, uh, how many later? Six years later, they finally, they finally just went all out, and in Halloween 6, they just fully embraced the wackiness of, uh, of this whole Thorn um, timeline with Michael Myers being this pawn of this cult, basically working for them to do, you know, their deeds or whatever, and there's just a few elements in there that I just would rather not discuss, but you also have Dr. Wynn, who is introduced in Halloween 5 as this man in black, so we don't know who he is yet, but in Halloween 6 we find out that it's Dr. Wynn, who is the guy he talked to, or, uh, Sam Loomis talked to in the original film, and, um, so, so now he's involved with this cult thing, and by the end of the movie, Dr. Wynn switch places with Michael Myers. Now Michael Myers is free from this cult, and Dr. Loomis figures out that he's going to be the protector of, uh, Michael Myers, so he feels this just immense guilt or whatever. He, he holds his hand, like, on his wrist like this at the end of one of the cuts, um, which, it, that, that's why I did that gesture. Um... So, yeah, it, just by the end of it, fully embraces the wackiness. I've never understood how people could like the whole cult timeline. Uh, very confusing, is not suitable for the character of Michael Myers. And I think I exaggerate a little bit when I say it ruins his legacy. But, obviously, Michael Myers is not supposed to have a motive. And if you are going to give him some amount of motive, no matter how big or small, don't make it something really stupid that is not character fitting for Michael Myers. This this guy who's wearing a jumpsuit with a white mask just is not it just does not suit a um you know like a, a paranormal type cult. Um just doesn't really make sense. But what I do like about the Thorn timeline is because is that Halloween two, four and five I like I like that kind of eighties seventies and eighties era of Halloween where you had um, uh, Dr. Loomis and, uh, and he was, you know, doing really, really great in, in those, uh, three films, you know, Halloween 5, not so much, but especially Halloween 2 and 4, really, really great performances, and it just had that 80s feel to it that I really liked, uh, in Halloween, I think, I think that was kind of Halloween's prime time, obviously, there's a few other movies that I like better than some of the movies that were made in the 80s for Halloween, but, I don't know, just something about the feel of those 80s, um, 80s Halloween movies I, I just really like, so that's that's why I kind of like the Thorn timeline a little bit better, because it includes pretty much all of the 80s uh, movies for Halloween, so I kind of like that feel, I like Dr. Loomis in this timeline most of all, um, and they do pay respects to him by the end of it, so I'm glad, I'm glad that they, they ended on somewhat of a good note, so... Yeah, the Thorn timeline goes to number six. Five is going to be the Rob Zombie reboot timeline, which obviously doesn't have a lot to offer. It just has Halloween, <clears throat> Rob Zombie's remake from 2007, and his second remake from 2009. So it doesn't have much to offer, <clears throat> but he does shake things up a little bit with uh, some of the themat thematic elements and uh, uh, the... This, the sort of presence of Michael Myers is a little bit different in the Halloween, uh, in the Halloween reboots. He's much more intimidating, kind of has this 
almost like this Jason, um, Jason-like character in terms of physical appearance, and definitely if, if even even further than that, if you get into Halloween Two, where he's starting he's starting to get these uh, we're starting to get these like visions of uh, his mother with this white horse, and then his young self, and all this, and it's really really weird. So it, it's definitely given me Jason vibes with with that uh, um, in this timeline. So I'll give Rob Zombie credit. Uh, the reason why I put him at number five is because Rob Zombie decided to go in a different direction. I think, honestly, I would have probably put him a couple spots lower, maybe at number six, and then I would have put Thorn above this if he just decided to go with kind of a just full-fledged reboot, just, um, you know, just a carbon copy off of the, the first two. What I I think you know I think Rob Zombie was more of a rehaul than it was a reboot. To be honest with you, um, he adds a lot more um, into the first one, and then in the second one, that's where he really starts to go into a different dir direction. He kind of gives you a little bit of bonus content in the first one, and then he starts to really go in his own direction and finish it off in the Halloween two. Uh, reboot. So I'll give him credit for going in a different direction, even though I am not a fan of the direction that he went with. Um, but I do like the intimidating side to Michael Myers. Um, it's something different to to look at. You know, kind of a more of a Jason type um, uh, type presence um, in t in terms of his physical appearance. Uh, he he's just much more formidable in in the the Rob Zombie reboots. Um, obviously there's, there's problems with Rob Zombie's movies in general in terms of the writing, and it's not, it, it's not really suitable for Halloween in my opinion. Uh, the very vulgar language in both of them, and, and especially in Halloween 2 where everybody is just negative. Um, everybody, uh, is just not having a good life right now, and it's just, it's, it's kind of depressing a little bit, uh, when you watch it, but... Uh, Rob Zombie Reboot goes at number five for kind of going in a different direction and not so much rebooting the franchise, but more rehauling the franchise. So uh, I'll give him credit for that. Number four is going to be the H40 timeline. And I really had confidence for this timeline when it started off with the Halloween 2018. And then I figured out uh, by the ending of it, not seeing Michael Myers in the basement, that they were going to make two more sequels. So it got me really excited but after Halloween, and even after Halloween Kills, I was still excited for Halloween Ends. But it wasn't until the trailer came out for Halloween Ends where I was a little bit concerned in the direction they were going. I was like, please, please, please don't focus the whole movie on something else completely unrelated. And then they did just that. Um, and it, it, it's more of a problem for the timeline than it is for Halloween Ends itself for me. Because I think Halloween Ends on an individual level is actually a pretty good movie. Um, but not good for the timeline when you have this plot that is n really has nothing to do with Michael Myers at all. Um, and you throwing it in, in the last movie of this trilogy makes this, this timeline so messy... And the, the, the sad part is, I know in my head how they could have made this timeline perfect. They, they could have perfectly aligned everything, but instead... And I don't know if this was just their, their plan from the beginning to go off of, uh, to go off of what they eventually did, um, or if it was just because of delays and um, obviously COVID happening, so you know they, they couldn't film at the time or whatever... I don't know. I'm, I'm really hoping that it was just the fact that COVID kind of messed things up and it wasn't just the fact that they planned this all along because I don't know what is going on in David Gordon Green's head if he thinks that placing the Corey Cunningham story into Halloween Ends is a good idea. Um, it should have been in Halloween Kills um, and I think Michael Myers should have been this... Uns did, I, I would have liked to see Michael Myers go all out like he did in Halloween Kills in Halloween Ends and then eventually be defeated by the end of it. That's that's how I would have liked to see it. Um, I don't know if they should have done the the ending that they did to with Halloween 2018 and Halloween Ends. I, I'm still not really sure where they should have placed that Halloween 2018 ending. Uh, maybe they should have put it in... Maybe they should have put it in the Halloween Kills if we put the Corey Cunningham story in. I don't know. There, But there's so many different ways they could have rearranged it that would have been so much better than what they did. And, you know, 
what they ended up doing with Halloween Ends just made this timeline very messy. Um, and all three of of the H40 movies, to me, feel very different. Halloween 2018, it had, it had that kind of modern slasher movie feel to it. Uh, they definitely tried to add in a, a lot of that, a lot of those elements into it, especially with the jokes and the kind of making fun of, of uh, making fun of, kind of like what Scream likes to do with uh, with slasher movies, with the whole making fun of slasher movie talk and all that kind of stuff. And then Halloween Kills, which is just complete carnage candy, characters being completely stupid, so it, it's kind of going, it, it's kind of going in the opposite direction of what they were talking about in Halloween 2018, and then Halloween Ends is just, I don't even know how to describe it, just extremely bizarre compared to the other two, um, it's nothing like I've seen in, in, in the franchise's history, in terms of just seeing characters do normal everyday things, and you have this Corey Cunningham, uh, Corey Cunningham being thrown into this story is, is really awkward, didn't have any problem with the plot itself, but it, it just, the placement of certain things in this timeline could have been done so much better and it would have made this timeline so much better um but uh overall i i, I still think it's i still think it's a fresh return to the franchise after many years of just pretty bad and mediocre sequels um i, I think it's a fresh return the it certainly has the best production value that, that, that was the one thing I was going to say, is that th this H40 timeline has the best production value. It's got the whole cast and crew from the original um, backing it up. Um, it's got a great director backing it up. It's got John Carpenter coming in here and there for tips and advice, and even Nick Castle going in there a few times to, uh, to kind of help with James Jude Courtney. Um, it, it's got great production value, um, so I'll, I'll give it that. Um, but uh, it's, it's very, very, very messy. And there were a lot of a lot of things they could have done better in the end. So that's it for that one. Right, these last three are going to be kind of the makeshift timelines, and uh, the makeshift timelines obviously are going to be more my kind of favorite ones because I, I made them up on my own. But I think all three of these timelines would make sense if you go by kind of their endings and things like that. So number three is going to be Halloween, the Halloween standalone timeline. And this is if if Halloween never had any sequels, never had an anthology series, nothing. It was just Halloween. I think I I think I would be totally satisfied. Um, it's certainly still I think either way, you know, franchise or not to this movie. Um, I still think it's one of the greatest horror movies ever made. I think a lot more people would agree on that if the movie didn't have any sequels because a lot of movies that um, are considered horror classics or the, one of the greatest horror movies of all time usually don't have any sequels. They're usually just a standalone film. So I think that would have really helped with the public's perception on this movie a lot more. Um, but uh, in terms of just how I would feel if Halloween was just a standalone movie, I think I'd be totally fine with it. Um, yeah, I would like to see Michael Myers on the big screen a lot more, sure. But... If you never knew that was going to happen in the first place, then you would probably agree that this movie as a standalone would just be better. So, for me, Halloween as a standalone goes at number three. Number two is going to be the anthology timeline. Um, I think that um, I, th I think that this would have been a great direction to go in, and I would be really curious to see how the franchise would have gone if they did go in this direction. So... In terms of this makeshift timeline that I have, it consists of Halloween 1, 2, and 3, because after that they were going to start to go in that Halloween anthology time or direction until Halloween 4 came along and they kind of just flipped the script because people didn't, at the time, did not like Halloween 3. They wanted, they wanted more Michael. But uh, yeah, I would, I would be really curious to see how uh, Halloween as a franchise would, would, uh, be like today if they they decided to go with this anthology timeline it would almost play out like a like a goosebumps series almost you have the two-parter halloween um the two-parter halloween episodes and then you have halloween three season of the witch and then so on and so forth um i think that would have been really cool you know kicking off with the two-parter michael myers uh 
episodes, whatever you want to call them, Season of the Witch, which kind of ties in with uh, with uh, uh, the original Halloweens as well, with you know that commercial scene and all that kind of stuff, and some of the 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 Sam uh, the Samhain stuff in it as well. Uh, I almost said Sam Hain. I uh, <laughs> uh, don't want to be like Dr. Loomis here, um, but uh, yeah, I would have been really. Uh, I'm really curious to see. I would have been really curious to see how, um, how especially how the public would perceive this franchise as a whole if it did go in the anthology direction. I think, I think it would have been a really solid franchise uh, because it was Deborah Hill and John Carpenter's idea, so they would have kind of probably gone along with it the the whole way through. They would have probably been involved with every single movie. And uh, I think uh, the movies would have a, a great um, a great theme as a result. I really love John Carpenter's themes in his horror movies. Uh, you know, Halloween three and Halloween one. It's a it's very difficult to decide which one is better sometimes because they're so similar in terms of their theme um, and just are so interconnected in 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 a kind of a weird way. Um, so yeah, I think it would have been really cool if they if they went in the anthology direction and kind of somehow intertwined all of them together to kind of make them all feel like one instead of just individual episodes. Um, and they kind of already did that with Halloween three with with the the commercial scene and the the Samhain references and things like that throughout the movie. So yeah, uh, and the anthology timeline I think as a whole this would have been the best for. For the franchise's sake, for the franchise's quality as a whole, I think this would have made the quality of the franchise uh, probably the best. Um, so yeah, let's get on to number one. Number one for me is my own makeshift 1-2 H2O timeline. For me, this is just a really solid trilogy um, for Halloween and just ends on a, on a really, really great note. Um, Obviously, all three of them have Lori kind of front and center, um, so that's really nice. You know, Michael and Lori front and center going kind of head-to-head -head in all three of them, so they kind of all connect together in that sort of way. Um, Halloween 1 and 2, obviously really great films, and H2O is in the number three on my film ranking. Um, all, all three of these movies are in my top five on my Halloween ranking, so... Um, you know, if you put them together, obviously, it's going to make for a really good timeline, and H2O's uh, ending, one of the greatest endings in the Halloween franchise, you know, just chomping off Myers' head, and then the original Carpenter music starts playing, she's holding the axe um, d down the hill with the van crashed, it's on fire, and uh, that's, how the, that's how the trilogy ends, I think it's just so great, so satisfying. Uh, when you see how much she fought within the, the when the within the past three films to kill this dude, I, I think it's really really great. So one two H two O is my favorite uh, makeshift timeline. You know, regardless, still I think it it is just in my eyes a really really great chill trilogy. And uh, forget about Resurrection because it sucks and it ruins everything. So. Yeah, that is it for the ranking. Stay tuned, we still have a few more rankings to go for the Halloween franchise. Um, and uh, after I am done with those two rankings, it's probably going to wrap up my whole uh, con Halloween-related content for the month of October for the for the spooky season, whatever you want to say. So, um, yeah, make sure you stay tuned for that. And I don't think I have any other announcements to, to make other than that. Like and subscribe, guys, and I will see you next time.